In this video, we'll build up a lazy loaded video component in Angular using the new defer block in version 17. And in the process, we'll also learn about the various options available to us to trigger the lazy loading. Are you ready to learn the new defer block? So let's get started. So we have here an Angular version 17 project using the updated CLI. So if you're following this, make sure to update your CLI by using the ng update command or you can uh, globally install it using the npm install angular cli command next after that I, had, I have installed the angular material package the latest one which is version 17 and then the youtube player package now this youtube player package is the official angular youtube player module that is regularly updated great now let's go to our code and see how it looks like so I've created a basic code for you just to test out things and this is a basic blog page which is the most common you can say the use case for the defer block and so I have here a material toolbar at the top called my defer block and I have a container and then a block section within it and a title and some long text which is just dummy text right now and I want to add a YouTube video in between this but the twist is that I want that YouTube video to be lazy loaded so let's see how this looks like right now let's do ng serve open great and you can see that the blog looks okay and it is just like a normal blog that is uh, pretty common all over the web but you can see here in the compilation first of all you can see that you have just one compilation of the main.js file you don't have any separate chunks and this means that there is actually no lazy loading uh, currently happening in your app so let's create a new component our video component which we are going to use for lazy loading we have another uh, command prompt open here and let's do nggc which creates a new component and let's put this component in the components folder and let's call this the video component great now let's go into our video component here and let's see how this looks now we are going to import the youtube player inside of it so let's remove the common module because we don't need it we can just import the youtube player video here so let's do youtube player here and let's add the youtube player module here great and now we can add the youtube player here now to correctly render the youtube player uh, we also need to use the iframe API and we need to add a script tag for that. Now I have done that in a service already and let's go and use that service so we can use youtube.service. Basically what it does is that just loads the, adds the script tag for the iframe API but it only does that once and it listens to this signal which basically becomes true when the uh, script has been added. So we are just going to uh, listen to this signal in our video component so that we can be sure that the iframe has been loaded great so let's first inject this api loaded signal here and let's we are, we're going to do inject we're going to do youtube service here and we're going to use api loaded here we are using the wrong one here youtube service dot api loaded great and then here in the template we are going to use the if condition now this is also a new thing and we are going to cover this in a different video but this is a new control flow syntax so we are going to use this instead of the ng if directive that we usually do so this is the if control syntax and in the if control syntax we are going to use api loaded so if the api is loaded we are going to just use the youtube player here okay now this youtube player takes some parameters and the parameters that we are interested in are the width now our block width is about 800 pixels so we're going to use the same and then we have a height of 400 pixels we want to use this and then which video do we want to play now we're going to create a sort of a reusable component so we want to take the input as the id of it so we are going to add a new input here let's add a new input let's call this the id okay and this is going to be a string we also want to make it required because other than this uh, if you don't have this it's not going to work and this we are going to add a definite assertion operator all right and now we can add the video id here and we can use the id that we have here great so now the if, if when the api will be loaded the youtube player is going to be loaded itself great one parameter we want to add here is also the player variables and we want to actually auto play the video player so that the user doesn't need to click twice on it when it defers loads so we're going to do auto play and one okay okay so we have created this video component now let's try just adding this video component to our main blog and where are we going to add it so let's add it after about four paragraphs like somewhere here and let's add this app video component here and i'm just going to add it now you can see that it gives these squiggly lines now when we do the quick tip you can see that it's going to automatically import the app video and what does it say now it says that it requires an id input so let's give our id which in our case is this now this is one of my um, course introduction videos okay so let's see how this looks now now when we go back to our page and let's refresh this again now you can see that the video is automatically loaded and it's there's no lazy loading here and you can see all of the packages here are loaded as well so you can see the angular youtube player 
package module is loaded as well. Now we should not need to note, uh, load this module because every user does not want to uh, watch the video. Maybe some user is not interested in that. Okay, so how do we lo lazy load it? Now Angular has provided a defer block that we can use. So let's go there and let's try doing that. Okay, so now we have this component, the video component that we have, which plays the YouTube video and we can just add the defer block here. Okay, so we'll, let's try adding that and it uses the same syntax similar at syntax as the new control flow does let's just add an empty defer block for the time being and within this defer block we can add our component here and let's see what this does now when we save this the first thing you will see here is that there is an extra chunk that is generated here okay so you can see the video component is now in a lazy chunk file now this means that it's not going to be bundled with the initial bundle of the app and this means reduced load time automatically and now when we go in our app you will see that the behavior hasn't changed so when you refresh this you will see that the behavior hasn't changed much the video is still loading as if it was losing eagerly but the difference is that it is happening it is lo lazy loading this chunk and this contains a youtube player module and this is actually happening when the browser had become idle and it has loaded everything else and the page has loaded. So this will automatically improve your page load times but angular the defer block provides some more features. In fact, a lot more features. It provides um, a lot of triggers that we can specify about when to actually lazy load this chunk. Now, one thing also you'll notice that if you look at the chunk here, you're going to see at the top of here, the YouTube service is also included. So the new chunk, which is lazy loaded, actually also includes the YouTube service because the Angular compiler knows that the YouTube service basically is just used in this one component. So it packages that YouTube service with that component, which is under the defer block. Pretty nice. Great. So currently, since we are just using defer, we are not specifying the trigger here. Uh, it's going to use the on idle trigger. Now on idle means that the browser was idle. As I said before that the browser was idle and then it automatically loaded the chunk file. But we can use other triggers as well. So for example, let's try a very common trigger and this is how we specify the trigger here. So we can use an on trigger and the first one we are going to try out is the on viewport trigger. Now on viewport means that the lazy loading is going to happen when the user actually scrolls to that specific component that we need to lazy load. Now this uses the intersection observer API under the hood which is really useful for scroll based actions and angular does all of this magically you know behind the scenes. But for this viewport you will see that we get an error here. And the error is that the viewport trigger with no parameters can only be placed on a defer that has a placeholder block. So what is a placeholder block? Now the defer block basically has some sub blocks as well that we can specify. And one of them is the placeholder block. And placeholder as it says is basically anything which is displayed before the component is actually lazy loaded. So it is a placeholder for example when a lazy loaded image appears it is that blurred area or you know that rectangular area that is shown or maybe the skeleton animation which actually shows that okay something is loading or something needs to be there so that is your placeholder so when you are actually using the defer on viewport angular needs some element or some ui element to basically add the intersection observer api to now within that placeholder we are going to add a placeholder now i've already created a placeholder component which is just a and if we go there we can look at it so it is just a basic um, diff which has some width and height because we are going to match it with our YouTube player and some background and there is a material icon with a play circle in between it. So let's just import that and use that here. So we are going to do app placeholder and let's just include this with the quick tip here. Great. So now let's see how this looks. Okay, so now let's refresh it. Okay, now you can see that we don't actually see the YouTube player package here in our initial loads and even lazy loaded. It's not lazy loaded automatically. That is because it's listening and it's waiting for the user to scroll to that specific placeholder. So let's go to our placeholder and when we go to our placeholder we can now see that we have our that we have our video loaded. And now you can see that this chunk was loaded. This contains a YouTube player module and then we have the YouTube player module separately as well. And then within this we have your basically your iframe API and because iframe is loaded with the YouTube service, you have the YouTube service and all of the chunk is only loaded when you when you actually scroll to this position. Okay, let's try this again. Let's go and let's come to our this and this component and you can see that we don't actually get to see the placeholder because this is so quick. It loads the uh, video component as soon as we reach that position. Great. So this looks nice. Okay. Now so this viewport is nice and this is going to be really useful for a lot of different use cases. But let's try another one. So there is another timer trigger here that we can use. Now timer means that it's going to wait for a specific 
number of milliseconds or seconds before it lazy loads automatically. So let's say for example that we give a big enough timer like we give 5 seconds to it and let's see how this works. So let's go to our this, let's go down, you can see the placeholder now, let's wait for it and then you can see that it loads our video just as before. Let's try this again, let's wait for 5 seconds and you can see that the chunk loads again. Great, so the timer is pretty nice as well. Okay. Now you can also combine triggers and you can actually put both triggers, the viewport and the timer or even other triggers in one defer block. So for example, we can add on viewport here and we can give a semicolon here and then we can also keep the timer here. Now this will be an or condition. So if one of these happens, it's going to lazy load. So whatever happens first, the time runs out. 5 seconds run out or the user scrolls through that video is going to lazy load it. So now when we go here, if we scroll down here, it's going to lazy load here. And let's see if we don't scroll down here, what happens? You can see on 5 seconds, you can see the, the video is already loaded. Great. So this is useful to have multiple trigger conditions when you want for this. So Angular team has provided a lot of flexibility in specifying your triggers for the defer. Okay, enough of these automatically sort of triggering um, defer blocks. Now what if we want to trigger the defer block only on some user interaction? So we have two user interactions that we can use. The first one is hover. So let's add hover here. Really simple. Let's see how this works. Now hover is really nice because it basically tells you the intent of the user. And if a user is hovering over something, that is a good indication that the user is interested in it and it, the user might want to use that specific part of the app. So let's go down and you can see that nothing happens till we keep the mouse here. And when we just hover over it, you're going to see that it lazy loads it so quickly. Great. So hover works really nice as well. But sometimes we can also hover, you know, uh, by mistake. So we don't want to really load the uh, video, but we just want to, you know, see what happens. Or we just want to, we're just waiting for some animations to happen or some, you know, some pop-up behavior. So in that case, we would want our video to load only on interaction. Now interaction is basically clicking on the placeholder itself. So let's try this one. Great. Let's see. And now when we click on it, only then it's going to lazy load it. Grace, so simple enough. Okay, so you can also add another um, twist to this. So Angular also provides a prefetch option here. Now prefetching is when uh, you can actually load resources that you think that the user might be interested in or is about to use. You can actually prefetch them by uh, sending it to the browser and the browser is going to prefetch them. It's not going to load them, but it's going to just prefetch them so that it can then load that later on. And it's not it's going to take less time then. So uh, Angular also provides some prefetch options in the on triggers. So let's say we mix it up a bit. Let's say when the user hovers over um, a video, this means that the user is probably interested in the video, but it, uh, it's not clear whether it wants really to load the YouTube player. So what we can do is we can prefetch the module at that time and then on interaction we can actually load that. So how do we do that? We can combine it just like this. So we can add a semicolon here and we can do prefetch on and here we can say hover. Now this on for the prefetch is similar to for on of interaction. So you can have hover here, you can have timer here, you can add interaction here, you can add any of the triggers that we just discussed. Okay, so let's try this out and how this looks like. And now nothing happens as you can see. Now when we hover over it, you will see that this is prefetched. So the chunk is prefetched, the Angular YouTube player is prefetched. But it's not actually loading the player. And when we click on this, you can then see that the rest of the player is loaded and rendered on the screen. Great. So this is a fine grained way to, you know, to ensure that you have that optimal performance in your app according to what your needs are. Okay, so we are just going to remove the prefetch because we're not really interested in that anymore. And let's just continue and see what other things that we have. You'll notice one thing here and this is a UI flickering. Now when you click on this, you'll see that the UI sort of goes back and then comes back again. Now why is that? Now that is the point where the lazy loaded component is actually loading itself. Now to handle that small part of the time that uh, the lazy loaded component is actually loading. Angular also provides the loading sub block here. Okay. Now this loading sub block, you can specify a sort of a loader or you can specify some other, you know, some indicator that this block is actually loading. So 
we are going to use the same placeholder but I have also added a spinner here and to activate that spinner I am going to give the loading is equals to true here okay so let's see how this looks like and now let's go down and we are going to click on it and you can see that we don't actually see anything and that is because the placeholder only appears for a very little time and the component is basically loaded at that time but what if you want to actually show the loader for a specific amount of time as is you know custom and as is recommended by um, UI UX experts that uh, the loader should show for at least some time to prevent flickering. So Angular also provides for that behavior and for the placeholder and for the loading uh, block it actually gives you the option of specifying a minimum time and for the loading it also gives an after time but that's not really relevant to us. So we want to show our loader for minimum 500 milliseconds. You can specify any time here that you want. Let's see how this looks like. Now when we click on this now you can see a loader for some specific time. So let's try this again and see. Okay, so some of the things have gone. So there is a loader. So there we can see a transition. But there is again something that is left. And there is a slight jump. And that jump is because the video itself when it loads, we don't have any minimum height set here. So let's add that here as well for the video component. And let's make it display block. And let's give a minimum height of or the height of 400 pixels, which is our video that is going to be the height of that. Great. Let's check this out again. Let's click on this. And now you can see that there's no jumping. There's no flickering. There's a nice transition from, you know, that loading state to that. Great. So finally, you can see that we have a good looking lazy loaded player with us, which will only load when the user wants it, thus reducing our initial bundle size and the load time. Now, this is the power of the new defer block in Angular v17. It brings in a lot of new possibilities to optimize your Angular app and is also pretty intuitive to use. Now, here I have only covered the on triggers for the defer block, like on interaction, on hover, on timer, etc. There is also a when trigger in which you can pretty much use any custom conditions to trigger the lazy loading of the defer block here. This allows us to have even user configurable lazy loading for your apps. But more on that in a later video i hope you've got a better understanding of the new defer block and now can use it in your projects please subscribe to my channel so that you can get notified if you haven't already and thanks for watching i'll see you later